Hi, I'm Don. Today we're doing color glazing and I'll try to explain everything and share everything that I know about color glazing in this video. Today we're painting this huge model from Gamak Miniatures. We will focus on the color glazing of the skin in this video. Of course, we're using some Vallejo paints, some Vallejo transparent paints, and some colors outside of this couple of sets that we're using today. I use more colors or more paints than usual so that I could show to you guys how the transparent paints are interacting as we layer them on top of each other. I also highly recommend buying or getting this set of transparent paints. They're really awesome. They're very versatile and you will see this in action in this video. Finally, we're color glazing both with water and mediums and I'll tell you when I decide to use water for glazing paints. As usual, we're pushing for Golden Lemon standard painting today. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. Brushes for glazing. I recommend the bigger Kolinsky brushes like my number 2 red grass Kolinsky brush. Or also you could use some bigger or even smaller synthetic brushes because you don't want your smaller Kolinsky for glazing. So what is glazing? Glazing, for me at least, is basically painting with transparent paints. Basically, you could glaze with transparent paints. You could see here where like I'm showing you transparent blue and of course you could glaze with tan glaze. These are glaze paints. There is tan or there is brown glaze, black glaze and even white glaze. You could glaze with washes, albeit they're very weak. Their saturation is super like super transparent. And of course, my favorite, you could glaze with inks. However, I recommend that you tone them down with mediums because they're very saturated. And of course, you could glaze with normal paints. You could water them down. Or you could use glaze medium or thinner medium. I prefer thinner medium because glaze medium is a bit too transparent for me. So adding more water to the paints will let you glaze with that paint. Or adding thinner medium or whatever medium you like will let you glaze with normal paints. Yellows, oranges, reds, and even purples are very easy to glaze because they're semi-transparent already. So water and a bit of medium will work for glazing these colors. Why zenithal underpainting is great for color glazing. Zenithal underpainting offers you good volume already and since you're painting with transparent or semi-transparent colors, you kind of create volume immediately once you paint over the semi-transparent paint over the zenithal underpainting. You could do the zenithal with black and white spray cans and then apply oil washes so that you have a nice zenithal look. You could also do value sketching on top of the zenithal or after the zenithal underpainting so that you push the highlights and the contrast further before you paint with color glazing. Value sketching is actually painting with black and white paints and you start from black primer and then you build up the lighter like gray paints like dark gray and then medium gray and then white gray and then very extreme highlights with white so that you have nice like you blocked where the areas of the highlight should be before you do color glazing but for this project we kind of did the zenithal with airbrush already and thus we're just pushing the highlights with a bit of gloss white mixed with thinner medium you could do what i'm doing here you're practically glazing already you're glazing white paint with medium and you're building up the highlights painting over raised details of the model until you get 
what you want in terms of the contrast and the volume of the model. However, you could actually just dry brush white gloss white or white glaze on top of the model and let it catch. The raised areas will catch the dry brushing. Thus, you kind of like push the contrast with dry brush highlights too. Whatever method you do, you may paint with spray cans, black paint, black spray can, and then white spray can. The crucial parts here are the oil washes or the oil wash and then you clean it up a bit so that you have really deep crevices and shadows and then you do some highlighting like what we're doing here so that you have a really nice high contrast model even if it's still in black and white the advantage of glazing white paint over the raised areas of the model you see here over dry brushing white paint opaque white paint is that you get more control and you have softer transitions however it's just personal preference whichever method you use as long as you push the highlights of your model once you are happy with your value sketching you could actually paint a quick satin varnish or matte varnish to your model before you do color glazing once the paints are let dry or the varnish are let dry for at least an hour, you are now ready for color glazing. You will notice in both these sets that the dark flesh, the normal paint, is a bit similar in terms of hue with the wood grain transparent paint. But I decided to use the wood grain so that our video is a bit more interesting. So we're using an orthodox paint to build up the colors into flesh tones. You saw in the video that we added a bit of medium to the already transparent paint, roughly around two parts paint and one part medium, and it made the paint a bit more transparent. This is great if you're just starting to paint the model so that you could see the gradation or the gradual buildup of the colors instead of painting a base color already immediately and it's difficult to revert back to the lighter color if you painted a dark flesh tone already. There are basically two basic advantages of using mediums with paints. One is that it does not make the paint runny or wash-like in terms of consistency and you're practically painting with the same consistency as normal paints. However, they have more transparency. So for me, at least for me, I find it easier because thicker paint or creamier paint is easier to apply on the model and it doesn't look as ugly in comparison to watered down paint. Unlike watered down paints, paints with mediums are very nice to brush paint and they do not settle around crevices and details of the model. They're better for filtering basically. Can you do airbrush glazing? Yes, of course. Actually, the mixture that we did, which is transparent paint with a bit of medium and a tiny bit of water is already perfect for airbrushing. Again, this is the second advantage of using mediums to add transparency. You could easily use them for the airbrush because they won't give you spider webs because they have a nice thicker consistency than watered down wash like consistency if you water down your paints if you don't have an airbrush yet or don't want to use your airbrush you don't really have to do this color glazing with the airbrush i just wanted to show that the same mixture that we're using for color glazing with the brush is the same mixture we're using for the airbrushing so the mediums kind of help with that and it's just making the painting faster but there's no like significant advantage of using the airbrush in this setup now we add more shade or we glaze down with darker colors 
skin tone or the usual skin tone especially for me i'm asian i'm filipino is basically orange or yellow orange to around red orange and add a bit of blue so that you kill the vibrancy of those colors and come up with flesh tones so i started with a yellow tan color so that you will see as i've said you will see the interaction of the layering of transparent paints over this yellow tan underpainting now we have the simpson skin you might ask why did i start with yellow tan color as my underpainting for the skin is because to show you like the relationship of the transparent paints like now we're using transparent red on top of this yellow simpson skin basically you might not notice it in the final outcome but if we did not paint the yellow tan color as underpainting for the transparent red we will come up with a very pinkish color which is fine but i'm going for a more like burnt skin look that has more color depth meaning it has very like subtle yellow color and it transitions into reddish skin and burnt skin around the edges of like the separation between the skin and the leather clothes now you could slowly see in the video that the transparent red over the yellow tan underpainting is producing a very fleshy like reddish skin color and they're interacting the transparent colors are interacting really well and the layering is producing more color depth because we have more colors we use more colors in the painting of the skin you might ask what happens if you skip the yellow tan underpainting color then if you paint with flesh wash or flesh wash ink or even like skin whatever the name is contrast paint you basically have a monotone look which is just skin color and the vibrancy or the luminance of the underpainting which is normally just zenithal black and white underpainting basically what i'm saying is that if you don't add or if you don't layer different colors on top of each other you produce less color depth and if you just use washes or skin wash to create like a skin color on top of the white will just produce a monochromatic like look for your skin now we do glaze stippling this is the first time i'm using these two words together basically we're stippling more highlights with semi-transparent paints that's why i called it glaze stippling basically you thin down your paint one is to one with medium or even like one part paint and more parts mediums like around two parts medium if you want more transparency or you could water down your paints if that sort of thing or if you don't have mediums then you apply them on the raised areas of the model or areas that you think the highlight should be of course could also use the airbrush with this colors and the result will be faster but stippling the highlights will produce a very nice subtle textured look to the skin which is perfect for the size of this model the dark flesh is actually our base color and we're applying a bit more but we're applying it as if it's the highlight so that we create a very nice contrast for the skin of this giant model since you are painting with transparent dark flesh you could be brave a little braver than usual and just paint over raised areas especially the folds in the skin so that you have a very like interesting look for your skin and it has more volume than usual as i've said the dark flesh is actually our base color but as you apply more layers and smaller areas on top of each layer you're actually converting the color into a pre-highlight color already it might not be obvious in the video 
because I'm not counting you the layers that I applied but I think I applied around three passes of this color on the raised areas and highlight areas of the model until I came up with very nice opaque pre-highlight colors. We are about done but we're adding more glaze tippling with light flesh. The light flesh is very light and it's perfect as our highlight color for this burned-ish skin that we're trying to achieve. I actually find the light flesh and any of the lighter flesh highlight colors to be a bit more opaque than usual thus i added more mediums so the mixture is roughly around two parts or even three parts thinner medium and one part paint as i've said in my most recent video before this video is that you could actually over highlight because it's easy to tone down even if you do over highlights i mean you do too much highlights now we're doing a lazy wash to tone down our highlights and bring all of the colors together in fine scale modeling the lazy wash is actually filtering you could also use oil washes for filtering or even inks but i highly recommend you add mediums to inks because they're very harsh for filtering I thinned down the game wash around three parts game wash and one part water, just water. You may decide not to thin down or water down the wash further because they're very transparent already. But with a thin down wash, I applied around two coats or two passes all over the model before I was happy with the result. After two coats of lazy wash with the game wash, I'm now using the same game wash to add more shade to areas of the model or the muscles that I think should be like, should be darker or should be the shadow areas of the model. At this point in the painting process, you could use the game wash without thinning it down with water and just apply it on the shadow areas and you'll have a better volume or you'll have better contrast in the overall look of the model. After painting or using the game wash as a pre-recess or pre-outline color, you're kind of building up more volume and more contrast as you go and you just let it dry and then you can do recess painting with transparent blue. You have to thin down your transparent blue into semi-wash consistency around two parts water or even three parts water if you like and one part transparent blue. So you might ask why not do outlining with purple or even black? Well black is too bland for me and purple will work. You could mix transparent red and transparent blue and you have like violet or you could use violet ink for the recess or the outlining but I kind of want to show you that transparent blue will work because since it's transparent and you paint it over like reddish skin then the outcome is kind of purple or violet since the blue is transparent. Again, recess painting or outlining with this transparent blue or violet or ink or even washes is done once you've fully painted the rest of the model. But I just wanted to show you that the outlining can be done with transparent blue or transparent paints with water. So how do you decide what to use in adding transparency to your paints? When do you use water? and when do you use mediums you add water if you want a wash and you want the paint to settle around crevices and details you want medium if you simply want to add transparency and you want to filter the model now for our usual golden lemon reveal of the skin painting 
I hope you kind of found the video informative and learned how to play with transparencies or to paint with transparencies. Basically, once you paint a transparent color on top of the zenithal underpainting, there's no way to make it lighter again unless you stipple some highlights. The key lesson here is to learn how to paint with transparent paints, meaning you make sure you utilize and maximize the zenithal underpainting by painting from light to dark. It's basically painting highlights first in a way, and then you glaze down or you shade with darker and darker colors. Lastly, try to utilize at least a quarter of the color wheel like yellow to red or red to blue so that you have more color depth in your color glazing. That's it, Pansit! That's it, we're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!